Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about the really important principle of independent assortment. So to talk about the principle of independent assortment, this is the problem we're going to end up solving. Um, and it could be a little bit longer even if we wanted it to be, but we're just going to do this basic principle here. And you can apply this to as big of a problem as you want to apply it to. So um, what the principle of independent assortment basically says is that when we have genes on the same or on different chromosomes, not on the same chromosome, on different chromosomes, when those genes, if we have one on chromosome two, let's say the gene for hair color is on chromosome two, and the gene for the number of toes you have is on chromosome 12, those things assort independently of each other. If you go back and look at meiosis, mitosis stuff, you'll actually be able to see that that's true. Because all those chromosomes, which way they line up, whether it's moms or dads, is completely independent of the rest of them. So what we're actually going to see is we can solve this just basically like doing two of these, right? So what you guys need to be able to do at this point is you shouldn't have to be doing Punnett squares anymore. Punnett squares take too long. They're not going to give you enough time on the test to be able to write a Punnett square out for every single thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we have a dominant allele. Um, we want to know, over here we're going to look and we want to know what are the chances that we have um, this genotype in our baby. Uh, we're going to do this, right? So this is what the final problem is going to be. Um, this problem over here is going to be what are the chances that we have this guy, right? This, what are the chances that our baby is going to have this? So I don't want you guys to have to do any Punnett squares for this. You guys should be able to look at this and say, we're going to, this is, uh, two heterozygotes, one two to one ratio. Um, this one's big A, big A. This one's big A, little A. This one's little A, little A. You guys should be able to knock that out really fast now. Um, assuming you can do that, if not, go practice some more. Um, but once we do this, we say, okay, as soon as I show you this, we should be able to say one quarter of the progeny are going to be big A, big A if we cross these two. So over here, we're going to do the exact same thing. And remember, because these independently assort, this one has absolutely nothing to do with this one, right? And this one has nothing to do with this one. We're going to do this just like normal. We're going to cross our two A's, and we're going to cross our two B's. So what I'm going to do is, in my head, I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to say, OK, we've got one quarter and one half. And then because I want both, right? I want big A, big A, and big B, little b. Do you guys hear the key word there? I said and. We want big A, big A, and big B, little b. What do we do when we hear the word and? We use the multiplication rule. So we want 1 quarter times 1 half equals 1 eighth. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you guys how I actually did that. Don't freak out. Um, what I did is first I took because they're independently assorting. Later on, you guys are going to get to link genes, stuff like that. That's going to make your life a whole lot more difficult. Be glad now that it is this easy, and don't make it harder than it has to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here, and I'm going to say, OK, we've got big A, little a times big A, little a, right? That's all I'm looking at. I'm not even looking at the Bs yet. Big A, little a, big A, little a. I want big A, big A. Well, we already did that over here, right? It's a quarter, because it is that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of big A, big A. Big A, little a, little a, little a. You guys shouldn't have to be doing Punnett squares, like I said. If you're trying to uh, double check my work here, feel free to do a Punnett square. But when the test rolls around, make sure you're comfortable enough with this, these simple kind of things. Um, and don't draw a huge Punnett square. Sometimes you see t students try and draw a Punnett square with every possibility of the alleles, and you end up with this big square that's not big enough for your test. Um, and just. Don't mess with it. Just do it this way. It's so much easier. Um, so we're going to take this one, and because they're independent and we want both, we want this and that, we're going to be multiplying the probabilities times each other. So we've got 1 to 2 to 1. So that means that this guy has a 1 quarter chance of being this. Now I'm going to do big B, little b. And when I do this, if I were to do a Punnett square, what I would end up with is a 1 to 1 ratio of big B, big B, big B, little b, right? And if you guys do a Punnett square, I promise you will see the 50-50 ratio there. Um, so if that is that, then the chance we get this is 1 half. And that's where I got my 1 quarter and 1 half from. 1 quarter times 1 half is 1 eighth. You could go through and do this for any given probability. So what I want you to do now is I want to see what you guys can come up with for big A, big A, big B, Big B. So go at it. Um, 
I'm gonna leave this here. Uh, feel free to pause the video because I'm about to go ahead and write the answer down. Um, and then you guys can find any combination of A's and B's and do it like that. Um, and then your professor could have C's and D's also, but it's all gonna be applied the exact same way. Split it up A, and then do B, and then do C, and then do D, because those are all independently assorting from each other, unless your professor says otherwise. And for this test, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that if you're learning this stuff right now, your professor isn't gonna have any linked genes, so we can go ahead and assume they're all unlinked genes, so they're all independently assorting from each other. But, back to this problem, big A, big A, big B, big B, Big A, big A, when we're crossing two heterozygotes, that's a quarter. And then big B, big B, if we're crossing two heterozygotes, or heterozygote and a homozygous dominant, that is one half. So we're gonna end up with the same probability as last time, a one eighth chance. Like I said, if you guys wanted to add in some more letters, um, go ahead and make it more complicated for yourself than your professor's gonna make it for you because that's the only way that you're truly gonna understand this stuff. But like I said, not that hard. Do some practice problems and you'll have it down in no time. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts in this video are referencing material from this specific textbook. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during normal business hours. For more information about our services, please visit our website www.baylor.edu. Thank you.